Okay, uh, hello everyone. I'm Kadarev, and everybody here at the venue is actually already packing up, so I'll try to make this quick. So this will be Tomb Raider 5, and since there are a lot of cutscenes in this game, I'll just start the game now. Uh, 3, 2, 1, go. Hi, Laura. Um, so we're starting out in Rome, and the first thing I want to do is actually clear out this area of enemies. Luckily, there's only one. And I'll tell you uh, why I need to do that in just a sec. However, for now I also want you to kind of ignore what I'm doing here. Uh, I swear to God, this dog attacked me first. So as I said, I need to clear out this area of enemies, and that's, uh, well, an enemy. Then I want to jump on top of this roof here. And pull out a flare. And if I put a flare next to a wall, and pick it up while Lara's back is against the wall, she will clip inside that wall and be out of bounds. And if I then use my magic binoculars in approximately this direction, we will get uh, a cutscene. So what happened there is basically Lara is the one actor in the game that can usually interact with triggers. But that's only if she's on the active map. So if she's out of bounds, um, there is a list like of priorities where it have other actors that can interact with triggers. So there will be an enemy, then another enemy, if that enemy is not on the field, then there at some point uh, flares, for example, can trigger stuff. And the object or actor with the least priority is the camera. So if there are no actors besides the camera on the active map, I can actually look at triggers and they will trigger for me. And that's what happened there. So I basically went out of bounds, I made sure the dog was not uh, on the active map anymore. At that point I was able to use my camera to trigger this cutscene. So just uh, as a start, these cutscenes cannot be skipped. And I kind of timed it, so there will be 23 minutes of cutscenes in total. And I'm pretty sure I don't have enough stuff to talk about for all of them. So I'm sure we will be able to enjoy this amazing voice acting at some point. But first I will do a similar glitch. So I will once again use a flare here and make the, uh, do the exact same setup. However, this time since there is collision on top, I will actually pop out here on top. Because if Lara is out of bounds, the game tries to put her back in bounds, and it does that by default trying you to uh, push you out on top of wherever you are. And if there is collision on top, then well, you will pop out there. Here we'll do a flare jump. So same setup again, but this time I will put the flare in bounds. Oops, and I screwed that up. <laughs> so um, Lara will try to pick up the flare, and while she's in a pickup animation game doesn't really check for collision. Uh, okay. Why, please? I'm pretty stupid right now. <laughs> this is not supposed to happen. Oh, I think I might know what the problem is. Okay, I give this one more try here. Okay, that's what I wanted to do. So anyways, as I said, uh, the game doesn't really check for collision while Lara's picking up stuff. And since there is an object in between her and the flare, namely the wall, we kind of screw up the animation they are actually able to uh, jump forward during that animation, completely bypassing the collision. And this is basically the first puzzle you have to do. You have to um, turn around these statues here. However, we are kind of doing it in reverse order. This lever you're only supposed, or lever you're supposed to pull uh, the second. The one we're supposed to pull first will now um, pull as the second uh, one, which is why the camera is kind of screwed up. So it actually was now focusing on the wrong statue. And I hope you're not too distracted by the background noises. As I said, we're kind of the last guy is actively doing anything in here. But yeah, as you can see, this is actually the one it was supposed to focus on first, but whatever, it's okay. So now we just uh, turn this one around, and that's actually already it for the uh, first level. And then we will get another cutscene where I can kind of talk about uh, the game's story, so to say, if you want to call it that. And kind of the background, I guess. So here I will try to do another flare jump. that. So now we should be back out of this. Okay. And now the door here at the bottom is open and we can pick up the key item which will then allow us to end this level. So um, Tomb Raider 5 
plays, you might be surprised, after Tomb Raider 4, which is a game I ran yesterday. At the end of which, Lara is presumed to be dead because she's kind of buried underneath the collapsed uh, Great Pyramid in Egypt. So in this game, the story is kind of that uh, a few friends of Lara's have gathered at her home and they tell each other stories about Lara's adventures in the past. So there will be four chapters in total. And the first one we're in right now is Rome. So here she's trying to find the Philosopher's Stone and she's kind of going up against these two guys. So that's Pierre Dupont, the French guy she's talking to right now. And the other guy is Larson. He's an American cowboy, as you can see. And this is kind of the comedic uh, part of the game. So there's a lot of like, you know, jokes and you will see one of them in just a few seconds. Haha. -ha. Um, yeah, so the second part after this will then take place in Russia, where Lara will go for the uh, Spear of Destiny. After that, we will go to Ireland and play as Child Lara, and we are finishing it off in New York um, with more of an espionage kind of mission and less adventure style. So the thing with Tomp or Tomb Raider 5, uh, in the speedrunning community we call these Tomp because we like to make fun of wrong pronunciations, um, is that it was kind of only done to get a paycheck. So after Tomb Raider 4 the developers were pretty much burned out on the series, but the publishers wanted to have them make more games. So they basically just tried to shift another one out, which they actually really confessed and said, yeah, that's what we did. We didn't really have any passion for this anymore. We just did it for the paycheck. So that's probably also one of the reasons why they had these lengthy cutscenes to make the game appear longer than it, it actually is. And as you can tell, I'm already kind of <laughs> running out of stuff to talk about. But luckily, this cutscene will be over soon. And then we'll be in Prime's Markets, which should be a rather short level, where we will do another flare jump out of bounds and then use our camera again to trigger the next level already. So here I'll pick up the crowbar, which I will have to use at the end of the next level. And then I'm already priming a flare here, because I want her or the flare to uh, already run a bit on its timer. Since I would have to wait for it to run out, as I said, flare also counts as active objects, and I don't want any active objects on the map. So here I have to drop it in one of the first two frames of bonking into this wall. And then I'll try to go for another flare jump. So now we're out of bounds. I have to wait for Lara to be interactable again. I'll slightly turn to the left and use my binoculars again. So after flare has burned out, we should then be teleported into the next level. There we go. And that's the Colosseum. Now I have not been to the Colosseum, but I assume this is definitely a completely correct representation of what it is like to be inside the Colosseum in Rome. So first we will now uh, trigger this trap here. Oh no. And that's why I saved. <laughs> Lucky me. So the thing about the saves in this game is there are no checkpoints or uh, autosaves. So it's basically up to the player to decide when to save. Luckily you can actually save wherever you want. But it also means if you forget to save, you can run into a lot of troubles. So this should work better. There we go. And now I just have to hit a switch down here. Now on my way back I will do a small trick which allows me to uh, go back on track a bit faster. Usually you're supposed to shimmy back in here in reverse. But if we do this correctly, Lara will be able to just make it barely to the other side here while going forwards. We kind of jump through the corner here to bypass an enemy trigger. So normally there should be an enemy here which we bypass because we kind of and jump through the corner there. However, we have one here and hopefully they don't disturb us while we pick up this flare. This sounds good, yeah. So once again we get pushed out on top. I assume you also are hearing the background noises. Once again apologies for that. Oops. And here we take a sh small shortcut because we need the key item that spawns in there. We actually don't need it itself, but it will open up the next door. 
and we can't really bypass that otherwise. And to get back on top there, because this is actually a timed event, uh, we will once again use our trusted flares. And I actually have to pick it up from this side, it's really weird. Like, I know it looks weird that I have to take this detour, but trust me, this is the only way it works. So here, there, these are actually trap doors, so these would uh, lower if I would were to go on them. But I want to... Oops, uh, that will probably not work. Let me just reload. So here I do a somewhat precise setup, and hope I can clip through this wall nice. So usually you're supposed to slide down there, it's kind of a trap, and that would trigger another cutscene, which is very long, which I obviously want to bypass. And this should be fine if I can get the flare jump to work. And there you can actually kind of see the uh, how a flare jump would look normally. So you just do the pickup animation, but you also go quite a distance forward. He, oops. Here I'm supposed to have a uh, key item, which I don't, or I need a key item to activate this switch here, but I don't have it. So I'll just uh, convince the game that I do have it, as you can see here. So since we put a flare next to it while being out of bounds, and we want, or we say Lara, she should pick it up, the game thinks, well, just interact with the most nearby object, which actually turns out is, of course, the keyhole. So Lara just interacts with the keyhole instead of the uh, flare instead. Here I will do some magic in my inventory. What I actually did is I, I did an underflow on my med pack counter. So right now I should have around 65,000 large med packs, which should be enough to uh, get me through the next two fights. And as you can tell, the aiming is really great in this game. There we go. So he should now drop the key which we then need to actually get into the next room. Let me just save first, because I will have to do some precise jump to get into the right position. Because I will do the same trick I just did at that uh, switch there to open up this gate you can see on the right there. You would need a key from this guy, but I'm terrible at this game, so I don't know how to fight him. So I'll just try to cheat instead, of course. That's what we do here. I mean, what? Just like that. And Lara sighing, that's the sound of me using med packs. Get used to it, we will probably hear it a bit more often. And that's actually uh, the end of Rome. So as I said, after Rome, we now go to Russia. And of course, in Russia, it has to be a military mission, right? So Lara is now trying to get onto a uh, military submarine. So we have to be a bit more sneaky. Uh, nice bonk right into that container. Great. So this flyby cutscene I can't skip. But what I will basically have to do is I will first have to get a key card, um, and then we will do another flare jump past the big gate we would usually have to open up. But that's you know that's taking too long. One restriction we have in Russia is that we only have three flares really, so we cannot waste any flares because um, yeah I need all three of them in very specific parts of the run. So I just hope I'm not by accident uh, pressing the wrong button. That would be terrible. So first we need a key from here. Which should then give us access to a control room where we can get a security card which will get, uh, let us have access to the rest of the level after we do the flare jump I mentioned before. So in we go. And the thing is between, um, not levels, but between different chapters, so this is as I said the second chapter, our inventory kind of resets, so I need to do the uh, med pack on the flow again. So I'm taking quite some damage here, which is unfortunate, but uh, as I said, luckily I can just do this. And uh, as you can also see, I can once again heal as many times as I want, basically. Now it's time for the first uh, use of a flare here. As I said, I want to do a flare jump here. 
This is a rather precise one, so I'm looking for a specific camera angle, and I'll definitely save here. Okay, that should work, and we're past this gate. So the rest of the flares I will actually use in the next level, so I have to be a bit more creative now with my ways to proceed. So I actually want to get on top of this, and as you saw earlier, best way to do that is to go out of bounds and let myself be pushed up. So let's do that. However, I can't do this, that on, on this corner here, so I need to be even more creative, which I will do by just uh, jumping into it. Hopefully this will clip me. Yeah, nice. And there we go. Uh, that's not quite what I wanted, but uh, sure. When did I save last time? <laughs> oh, okay, that's fine. I wasn't sure what I actually saved, but that should still be fine. Yeah. That's not how you do a backflip. That's how you do a backflip. I also hope you enjoyed the classic neck break sound there. So this is the first uh, time we need the keycard, because we actually have to pick up a fuse in the next area. And one of these here which will then allow us to insert it later on and unlock the trigger to the next level. There is a dog in this room which might uh, try to prevent me from pressing the button to open the next door. There you saw him on the left. Let's hope he's behaving. Yeah, that's okay. He can actually push you around quite a lot. As you can see there, Lara has, is having some troubles, but that's fine. And here we go. So here we just need to insert the fuse and hit another switch and then we should be able to actually board the submarine. However, since this is kind of, you know, an undercover mission, I need to be really stealthy when it comes to boarding the submarine. So let's see how we accomplish that. First, as I said, I need to hit another button. Also, please ignore this. It's uh, not what it looks like. So I need to get really high here. Let's see if this should work. Yeah, perfect. So that's how you usually uh, board a submarine apparently in Russia. Um, there will now be another cutscene. Um, which actually gives me time, even though you can't hear it right now, but you may have realized I'm playing this in, in English. Um, for the longest time we assumed there is no real difference between language versions, which kind of still holds true. However, recently we found out that in one somewhat specific version uh, from Japan, it seems like they left in kind of a debug command, so whenever you press the I key, you get all the key items of the current level into your uh, inventory. So they just spawn there, which means we don't even we would not have had to go even in the control room. We could have just gone, gone straight to the end here because we would not have to collect any key items. We just have them. However, as I said, this is the English version, so that's not applicable here. And um, it's also worth saying that the Japanese version we're talking about is extremely rare. So right now it's not really being used, and apparently some people are really hyped in the background. But I highly doubt it that it's because of uh, this cutscene. So yeah, uh, Lara is now on board of the submarine, but as you can see she uh, has been welcomed in a way she did not anticipate. So she will now be locked up and actually we are losing our weapons here, so no more pistols. Which means the re next part will be like a lot of climbing and stuff until we get our pistols back. And the main goal here is to obtain or uh, obtain all the items we need to outfit a uh, diving suit. Because as I said, we are looking for the Spear of Destiny, which is somewhere buried on the sea floor after World War II. So that's also shout out to the guy clipping through Lara there with his pistol. That's our main objective. But first, we need our pistols back. Aye, aye. Okay, so first we need a crowbar, so this should work. 
and then, as I said, a lot of climbing. Now, you might think, well, you said, if you go out of bounds, you just get pushed on top of things. That would be great here, and I agree, that would be great here. But as I said, I only have two flares left, and I need them for way more uh, important stuff later on. So, sadly, we actually have to watch Laura climb a lot of stuff here. So, get used to this animation. Though, um, in the aforementioned Japanese version, I actually could use my flares here, because, as I said, we get the key items anyways, and I actually need my remaining two flares to get, get some of these key items. So, we would have some spare flares there. Nice rhyme. So on the next floor, I will do basically the only glitch uh, for the next few minutes. So what I will do is I will clip into a corner to hopefully trigger um, a door way below. Um, so this is one that I would I will go through later on. But for some reason, if you um, you'll see it soon, we call it the wall hump. So you line yourself up in a somewhat specific way here. And then you just repeat this. Oh, nice. <laughs> Instant, okay. So that just triggered uh, a door on the lower floor, which will now be opened. Usually I would have had to get a key for that as well. And here I collect the first battery I need for uh, the diving suit I mentioned earlier. So um, that's the thing I did there on the corner is basically the one of the last big RNG elements in the run. For most of the other ones, we have found some kind of setups, but that was yeah basically as fast as it as it gets. So that's great because I already lost a lot of time earlier. And of course, um, trust me, it's a very good idea to have some dangling and open wires hanging in your submarine, your to be fair rather blocky submarine. But uh, yeah, that was enough climbing. Let's have another cutscene because those are a lot of fun. Also, please try to ignore the somewhat offensive Russian accent here, um, but I can't change it. I mean, we could play in Japanese, but then, yeah. It's cargo. I'm trying to think of some uh, things I could talk about. Actually, I think I have one for the next cutscene, because trust me, the next cutscene in this game is always coming. And as I said earlier, uh, there are roughly 23 minutes of these cutscenes, so that does not really include the longer fly-by cutscenes where they show the environment. Um, so roughly, there are like 40% of the run is uh, cutscenes. And if you think this is already bad, then uh, yeah, I hope you will enjoy the next chapter which will be in Ireland as Child Laura. Um, yeah, that will be exciting, trust me. Okay, so now that we're done with that, it's finally time to get our pistols. And they are, of course, uh, hidden in the kitchen. And where there's a kitchen, there is usually a chef. And where there's a chef, they, of course, have huge knives that they want to kill innocent uh, people with. I have heard also, I don't know. But first, we have to get into the kitchen which is underneath this hatch. And I kind of want to save here because we have to sneak up on the uh, chef. And well, we have only one thing that can really hurt him, which is of course our crowbar. So uh, this is not representative of my opinion of chefs, don't worry. But if you actually make too much noise next to him, he will attack you. And since we don't have any weapons, well, the only way would be to go back up the shaft and. Uh, quite a way back so he uh, forgets about us. But yeah, with his key we can now open up this room where we first get another key which will let us out of this room and actually our pistols are in here as well. Just turn around once and here they are. Let's immediately equip them. Even though we won't need them for a while but now that we actually have our weapons we can 
run around as much as we want and collect the rest of the key items for our diving suit. Oh no, I'm getting shot at. If only I had some med pads. So here is the next key item. It is the Arcolong, I think. And now we go back and in the other direction we came from. All the way back. Hi, bye. And collecting some more stuff. While sighing about the second. So this next door is the one we opened up earlier by uh, going into the corner. If you remember. And here we get another battery. So all that's left is now the console. Which will be guarded by an enemy and that's the only reason why we really need the pistols here. So just one more enemy and then we have all the stuff and we can finally go into our diving suit. So basically for all of the classic Tomb Raiders except for the very first one, um, you always have some kind of uh, vehicle you can drive around in, at least one, in some games even more than that. In this game it's kind of a vehicle, kind of not, it's, so you will see the diving suit just allows you to basically die for as long as you want. So it has some intricate controls to it, let's leave it at that. But yeah, this is the guy who had the console. And with that we have all the key items and it's time to get our uh, diving suit prepared. Just have to combine the items in here. And that's it. And then we're ready to go somewhere. So funny thing about the Japanese version I mentioned earlier, so the next segment is the only thing you have to do really is to collect the Spear of Destiny or the Spearhead and return to this submarine. Time to turn the tables. Um, so the game only really checks if you have that Spearhead and if you're close to the uh, level entrance, which is also level exit, it will just put you back onto the submarine. And as I mentioned earlier, in the Japanese version you can simply press the I key to automatically spawn all the key items in your inventory. So in fact, the uh, next segment would be roughly one second long in the Japanese version, because all you do is you press swim upwards and that's it. So that's where you know the prestigious individual level grinds come in. Um, it's a really difficult category. But yeah, also don't ask me what happens to Lara's face here, um, it's really interesting change, but it kind of looks like me because I'm a bit tired as well, so uh, yeah. And also Laura likes to not go as fast apparently. But yeah, basically once you're in the diving suit or in the next area, all you can really do is um, dive to the um, next cutscene. There is not really any way to attack or anything. The only thing we have other than our diving suit are these uh, scatter flares here which are supposed to uh, so there will be some enemies shooting projectiles at us and these flares will uh, attract these projectiles themselves and see them away from us but doesn't really matter since we have unlimited med packs anyways so yeah but it makes a funny noise when we activate them so I guess that's a win isn't that amazing but yeah all we do now is just go to the next cutscene. Oh boy. And then, once we have the spearhead, of course, we're going to go the same way back. Well, almost the same way. There is actually a, a torrent system here. So we try to go into one of these torrents that will uh, actually speed us up a bit. 
which you cannot cross on your way in because you know you get pushed back quite a bit. Also, when I mentioned earlier that they did not really have all the passion for this game that they could have, uh, you will see some instances of this here because her voice line will actually cut out before uh, she's done with it because the cutscene's just done and I guess they didn't really care too much about these things adding up. So she will say it's time to leave instead of time it's time to leave. It's time to leave. At least we get some uh, nice music, but it, as it turns out this is just uh, a copy track from the previous Tomb Raider game, so I guess that kind of works out as well. So, as Laura said, it's time to leave and go back to the submarine you can see there in the background. Trust me, that's definitely what a submarine looks like. So there, maybe you saw I sped up quite a bit because of the underwater torrent. And you might not believe this, but we're actually are going to get a cutscene here, so that's great. So basically, Laura now has to do with Destiny, but uh, once she's boarding here, she will be surprised by the Russian Mafia, because the Russian Mafia will always surprise you. It's basically kind of like the Spanish Inquisition. And she will uh, hand over the Spear of Destiny again. But as it turns out, that has some interesting side effects. But enjoy, I guess. Well, that got bright quickly. <laughs> and yes, of course, the Russian evil guy is called Sergei. I'm not that surprised to be honest. But yeah, basically this will now blow up the submarine and the submarine is sinking. So our only goal now is to escape the submarine. But as I mentioned earlier, I kind of saved uh, my two remaining flares up until now. Because we will need some more key items. And I will once again uh, kind of trick the game into giving them to me for free. But first we have to get there. Uh, that's. Also not quite what I wanted, but sure. It looks creative, I guess. Anyways, let's get out of here. So, some more climbing. Um, up next, there will actu would actually be a cutscene once we enter the final room. However, it turns out, if you're set on fire, the cutscene trigger will not activate. So, luckily, there's some fire here. And luckily, I have a lot of med packs. So I told you earlier to get used to this healing sound. I hope you appreciate the warning now. And here we'll set up another uh, keyhole glitch. Which actually has to be rather precise here when it comes to the location. This should work, yes. Okay, so now I need to line it up properly. Okay, there we go. So of course, Lara now just pulls out a security card, which she definitely obtained. Also, since the flare, is, the flare is still active, we can use it on this ladder right here to teleport to the top of it by just going out of bounds here, and there we go. So that just leaves the final room. And as I said, since I'm on fire, the cutscene, which would usually play, will not play here. And even more lucky, there's actually some water inside here, which will uh, get rid of the burning. So that's it with uh, Lara sign. So all that we need is now to insert two kind of like oxygen bottles into these contraptions here. But obviously we don't have those. So we need to set this up in an interesting way. So let's just see if this works. I don't know. 
I didn't even see if the flare went inside. Okay, it went. Okay, yeah. So this is basically the exact same thing as I did before, except that now Lara will pull out uh, some bottles out of her backpack. Uh, oops, whatever. Should still work. Uh, except if I forget how to do this, might actually. Uh, okay. As you can see, the flare uh, burned out there like a second after I was done with it. So if the flare extinguishes, you can't do this trick anymore. Since you need to act the flare to uh, have Laura interact with it. But yeah, that's actually the end of the Russia chapter. And the submarine will now uh, sink. And Laura will escape because the good guy here, so the Russian admiral, who was kind of forced to do all of this because of the Mafia will sacrifice himself to uh, eject Lara out of the submarine. But first, of course, some background story, which I will totally uh, understand. But um, since that, this will take a while, I might just as well talk about why I came to run this game. So usually I'm just, or I used to be a uh, trilogy runner of Tomb Raider, which is the second generation of Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider games. Legend, Anniversary and Underworld. After some time I learned Angel of Darkness, which is uh, universally considered to be, of course, the best Tomb Raider, but it falls somewhere kind of in between the first and second generation. It's not a PS1 game anymore, but it's, also, but it's still done by the uh, old developers, so nobody really knows where to really place it. But I never really touched any of the classic games, so Tomb Raider 1 to 5. And for some reason someone in my um, chat, shoutouts to Appel, suggested as a joke, I presume, a bit drive uh, of an undisclosed amount to make me learn a classic Tomb Raider game. And of course, as things, goes, as things go, that was met at some point, which meant I had to learn uh, a classic Tomb Raider, whether I wanted or not. And I actually learned Tomb Raider 4 first, which I ran yesterday. But since this game is basically Tomb Raider 4, except with more cutscenes and worse controls, uh, I learned this as well, because why not? So yeah, that's it for Russia. We're now uh, going to do the island chapter. So this is Child Lara, and Child Lara does not have flares. So that's a problem, obviously. Uh, but we can still take some shortcuts, because that already was the first level. So we're obviously not supposed to be grabbing that ledge right there that we did. But we used some uh, setup to just barely make it onto that ledge. And um, in this labyrinth here, we will be for a little while longer, um, because button puzzles are exciting, aren't they, Tokoloni? I mean, what? Also, this is a rather spooky place, so the lore here is that Lara followed uh, a holy man to uh, this uh, Irish village or whatever it is, and there are a lot of like uh, spooky things going on. Spooky things like skeletons and moving benches and ghosts. So this is really spooky. Hope the warning helped. That was some interesting uh, double hit. Let me just dupe my medpacks again. And by duping I mean getting six, uh, 65,000 of them. So here I want to jump through the corner to bypass a cutscene where a ghost would come in here and hide some bone ash in this uh, contraption here. But that takes like a minute or so, so I really want to avoid that. However, the bone dust is still in here, so that's great. And now the same thing on the way back. There we go. Also, the camera is absolutely great in this level, as you can see. And that's what we need the bone dust for, so we can light this uh, torch here. And now I'm, I hope you're ready for some really spooky stuff. Because now we have twirling skeletons. But luckily this will get rid of them, because that makes sense. Also, yes, this is in the game that you can see past the black background on the left side. Don't question it. So now we can access this room, and that will actually allow us to finish the level early, because of course it does. I didn't, don't know if I counted correctly, let's see, yeah, this should work. 
or not. I don't know. Let's try to turn a bit further right, I guess. Nope. Mm -hmm. Maybe I didn't uh, buffer the correct amount of turns. Let's try again. Interesting. What the hell? There we go. So now we just jump and uh, wait for Lara to hit the trigger because she will continuously go deeper into this corner and at some point she will just hit it. Don't question this. Also, let's take a look at the ceiling here where Lara's shadow will appear because that of course also makes sense. And now this is uh, the time where I really don't know what to say because out of the next 10 minutes uh, there will be roughly 30 seconds of gameplay and a lot of cutscenes. Now I want to point out that uh, when the schedule was released I actually warned the Orga crew twice about putting this as the last game because, well, there are 23 minutes of cutscenes. But despite my warnings, uh, this was upheld and, well, here we are. So I hope you enjoy this. Oh no, a cutscene. Also, if you look at uh, the priest's mouth in a few seconds, uh, he will actually also do Lara's voice line, which makes a lot of sense. Right after this one, look at his mouth. <laughs> this makes a lot of sense. I guess he's a ventriloquist. But yeah, now we, uh, I hope you enjoy the next, or the only real gameplay of this chapter. Because here we do a similar thing we did uh, at the very start of this chapter, except a bit more of an intricate uh, setup. But this should still work. Yeah, there we go. So once again, we're not supposed to be here, but we can completely bypass the next part here and go straight to the amazing Vladimir Kalita. So I hope you enjoy this fella. And just to make sure, uh, this first cutscene is actually not as long as the second one, which will happen soon after this.
So yeah, basically, um, this is a fallen Russian soldier who's become a demon, and he got baited here to Ireland to just get imprisoned here because he cannot escape this prison of flowing water. And now we kind of have to lower the water for the priest to survive. So uh, I hope you're ready for some intense puzzle solving here. Oh look, we solved the puzzle. Let's watch another cutscene. Now, um, just to make sure, um, this will actually be the last really long sequence of cutscenes because this is actually the final one of the Ireland chapter and after this we will go to the uh, final chapter of the game which as I said will be New York once again with Grown Up Laura and that will actually be kind of the probably undoubtedly best uh, segment for the speedrun so personally I would say New York well, is like best and then uh, Rome followed by Russia and well I guess you may agree with me that Ireland from a speedrunning perspective is not the most exciting unless you really like watching cutscenes which after a few times might get a bit tiresome but yeah at least this one is really action filled you will see soon like first watch this amazing sequence of like combat news. Damn. Okay, here we go. Now it's actually getting threatening. Why does this game not have tag horror but uh, Dark Souls does? I don't understand. So let's hope for good uh, name reading out of a book RNG. Otherwise, Lara is screwed. And yes, uh, the bad guy is not in a hurry either, I guess. Damn, RNG is not in her favor. Okay, one more try. Amazing. Lucky us. Okay, so that's it for Ireland, and as I said, no more cutscenes. Oh look, a cutscene. But to be fair, this is actually one of the last ones, and the last really long one I want to say. So after this is done, uh, I will do another one of those tricks where I use the camera to trigger the next level. But this one is actually a lot more finicky. This used to be the main run kill, because it was basically a complete RNG, whether you would get a fast trigger or one where you would sit in there for an hour. Uh, hour? Yeah, basically an hour. Just hoping for the trigger to happen. But luckily we find found a way to make it consistent. Only question is whether I can actually do this. Also, I hope you enjoy uh, this outfit, because that's what you will see until the rest of the run. Also, I can uh, save here earlier than the cutscene ends, and if I reload, uh, the cutscene is done. So here I will need to do a somewhat precise lineup. First, shoot up this thing, then, okay, let's save here. This 
should be fine. And yeah, there we go. So <coughs> now we're in here. Um, let's try this thing. Oh, actually, we're a bit low on health, so maybe we want to have some more med packs. Oh no, I'm on fire. Well, that's really bad. Luckily, when I'm on fire, uh, these lasers, which would usually one-shot you, don't do anything to you. So I guess it's pretty good that I'm on fire. I were here uh, b when while boarding this uh, elevator. I should definitely reload the game because if you don't, then the game crashes. So that's definitely what, something I want to avoid. Anyway, so yeah, I hope you enjoy Lara healing herself. This will happen for a while. Uh, I don't really like this floor, so let's go down again. Oh no, I died. I mean, what, what, yeah. And yes, Lara can still heal herself even when she's uh, KO'd and prone on the floor. That makes sense. What the... Well, that was almost what I wanted. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> Guess I have to do a walking jump. Hello, please do a walking jump. Why does she not do a walking jump? <laughs> it's fine, I can still do this. See? Easy. Okay, so... Next up, we climb a bit, while still healing ourselves. And I hope I can count correctly, because otherwise we fall down quite a bit, and even the best med pack cannot prevent dying to death. Here I'll do another setup because we have to do a curve jump to skip ahead. There we go. Ignore that guy. Get up here, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. At least let me save you. You never know. And I guess it's in the interest of all of us to not to hear as few instances of Laura healing herself as possible. this door and we'll actually enter another cutscene. Um, during cutscenes I still have to heal myself, so yeah. This also makes a lot of sense because now she will be healing herself while talking. thing to mention here is that you cannot really mash uh, medkit uh, quickly because there is actually a certain amount of cooldown and if you press the key again before the cooldown it will have no effect and actually prolong that cooldown so you can actually kind of screw up rather easily there but you're getting used to the uh, rhythm quite fast I would say so with that key item I can now access the ground floor
turned into another cutscene. Or I still have to heal myself. And I really don't know what the key uh, is for this next keyboard, so let's hope I can get this RNG in a decent manner. It's definitely not 1672. But let's try that anyways. Oh wow, it was actually 1672, who would have thought? So just go around here, press this key, press this key, press this switch rather. And then we're in for the final stretch to get into the last level. Which will actually get rid of the fire. So once again here I can completely ignore the lasers because I'm already on fire. And that makes sense. Oops. So that's that. And that leads us to the final cutscene, and I will actually be slightly above estimate, but don't tell Orga, it's fine. But I'm not surprised because quite a few things went wrong in this one. So this is our former mentor, Werner von Croy. If you know Tomb Raider 4, then you also know him quite well. But basically we're invading his uh, um, company to get rid or to steal one of his artifacts and that definitely makes a lot of sense because the lore of this makes a lot of sense but don't worry that does not come into play at all also this actually counts as its own level which our auto splitter when you run this game does respect so you will have a level that consists solely of a cutscene and the only time save or loss you will have is because of loading times so you actually have to be, uh, hope for good RNG on loading times there Okay, so this is the actual final level and I will probably not talk all that much because it is actually pretty... Uh, I need to focus quite a bit actually. But first we get rid of this guy and I'm really good at uh, aiming with this thing. Oh, I actually am. Wow. So he's a goner. Then I will definitely save here. This, this jump can be a bit spooky. And on the next jump we'll actually bypass a trigger which would... Uh, make a lot more collapse here, so that's good. Into the shaft. Okay. So this guy you see patrolling there on the top, oops, what am I doing? <laughs> um, he can be a bit of a mini uh, because when he decides to drop down into this uh, room we're in right now you would have a bit of a problem because you actually cannot go into aiming mode with your gun down there because of the fixed camera angle oh no That's, that was definitely very realistic okay so here there are quite a few lasers which you cannot see yet but you will see soon there we go Okay, apparently we're back. Uh, there was a lot of background noise going on that would not have been too pleasant on the ears, so... But I'm surprised because I assume my voice is not too pleasant on the ears as well. I mean, what? Okay, so here comes an interesting challenge because, as I said, I'm really good at aiming. Trust me. Okay, never mind. I actually am good at aiming. And now we will do the final trick. It's called a crop, where we will try to... Um, okay, I will probably get cut out again.
I'm not sure if that will work. We'll see. Okay, time. <laughs> so yeah, basically we use the uh, the bugged animation there. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh, not not in a minute. <laughs> but yeah, you can uh, basically go out of bounds there at the very end with that trick, and once again use some precise buffering to look at the level end trigger. And that's Tomb Raider Five. I guess someone from Orca wants to say some final words. Okay, so that's it for me. Thanks for watching. And shout out to the Tomb Raider community. <laughs> so, hi, it's -a me. Uh, sorry for the last 15 minutes where it got really loud in the background. I think you heard that. Uh, so, yeah, that's our second event done. Um, was was really cool that we could be here except for like no internet and stuff but well that happened <laughs> I mean we we could fix that and, and go on with streaming and uh, yeah the, the rest went pretty smoothly I want to say um, so yeah what's there um, to say First off, of course, thanks for, for the event crew to have us here. Um, of course, thanks to all the runners as well. Thanks to the tech guy who, who did stuff with me. Wait, wait, I, I want to have him in the frame. There he is. Cause, ah, okay, nice. Because yeah, we generally did all of this, all all the 30 hours with mainly the two of us. Uh, that was a ride. That was not much sleep, especially. <laughs> but hey, we we managed, we did it, and yeah, it was fun. Um, thanks also to you, all the viewers, and yeah, uh, see you again quote-unquote soon the next event is not planned yet and we don't have a venue for that yet but uh, we're talking with people and yeah we we're gonna get there and uh, tell you on our discord server and on our uh, Twitter as well uh, when that's gonna be so yeah hope to see you around then again and yeah I think that's it guys yeah have a good time until then. Have a good time. <laughs> <laughs>